because of that controversy. And a topic that 99.9% .9 of the shiur who are on social media will not touch with a 10-foot pole. So brace yourselves, inshallah ta'ala. And hopefully the males in here and the men are ready more than the women. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fi surat al-nur, he starts the surah with, suratun anzalnaha wa faradnaha. وَأَنزَلْنَا فِيهَا آيَاتٍ بَيِّنَاتٍ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah An-Nur he said Suratun anzalnaha wa faradnah This is the only surah that has this beginning The only surah معنى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فرض جميع آيات القرآن والأحكام التي في القرآن That Allah sent down the whole book of the Quran as a rule of law. قانون ودستور يعملوا به المؤمنون. In this particular surah, Allah subhanahu wa taala, He says, سورة أنزلناها وفرضنا. It's this surah. We sent it down and we made it an obligation, and it has obligatory verses inside of it. For what? For the purpose that you might remember, that we might remember لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُوا So that we might reflect, be reminded, understand, comprehend. In Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His infinite wisdom, knows that there's going to be a time where this subject will become a subject of debate. This topic is going to be very, very controversial. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His infinite wisdom, and there's many verses in Surah An-Nur that are controversial. It talks about expiation for those who commit fornication or zina. And it talks about al-hijab. And that's the one we're going to talk about today. Hijab al-Mar'ah. I want to try to encompass the entire subject, insha'Allah, bi'awnillahi wa tawfiqihi, in this khutbah, and I'm going to be very fast. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَقُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَغْضُضْنَ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِنَّ وَيَحْفَضْنَ فُرُوجَهُنْ وَلَا يُبْدِينَ زِينَتَهُنَّ إِلَّا مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا وَلْيَضْرِبْنَ بِخُمُورِهِنَّ عَلَى جِيُوبِهِنْ وَلَا يُبْدِينَ زِينَتَهُنَّ إِلَّا لِبُعُولَتِهِنَّ أو إخوانهن الآية And then Allah talks about من هم التي تحق لهم هذه الزينة أو النظر إلى هذه الزينة أو رؤية هذه الزينة Allah سبحانه وتعالى He says And tell to the believing women to lower from their gazes Lowering the gaze is not just a male thing. It's not just for men. And every time you talk to the sister or you talk to a Muslim woman, or we talk about the hijab, it's always pointed out, why can't you men lower your gaze? Mm. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's telling the believing women to lower from their gaze. وَيَحْفَظْنَ فُرُوجَهُنْ And protect their chastity in their private parts. Because by looking is how it all starts for men and for women, especially in this time. And they are not to show their adornments, their beautification, only that which is apparent. What is apparent? Some ulama said the different bumps that the woman might have as she wears the clothes that are unavoidable. Some of the things she might have on her clothes. And some said, some of the things that are shown by accident, for instance, when the wind blows, like her ankle or something of the sort. And some said the face and the hands. And there's different interpretations. إِلَّا مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا وَلْيَضْرِبْنَ بِخُمُورِهِنْ And they are going, and they are to do what? Cover themselves. Bihumurihin. 
ala juyubihim. So the women, listen to me, and dear brothers and sisters, so you understand, in the jahiliyyah, the woman used to wear very similar to the men, where the men, they have a imama, and they have a dhanab min wara. They used to have a piece that lays all the way down through their backs. And the longer your dhanab was, the more wealthier you were. And the women used to do similar. They used to th throw a ghita on their heads, and the thing that was apparent was a sadr, this neck, this opening here, her neck, her ears were showing. Just like we see a lot of the hijabs today, from a lot of sisters, exactly the way they used to do in Jahiliyyah before Islam. They said that the Sahaba, the Sahabiyat radiallahu anhunna, as soon as this verse came down, they started to rip anything that they had of um, Qumash, that they had in their homes or from different clothes to cover their hairs and to cover that portion or that part that Allah subhanahu, subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about. وَلْيَضْرِبْنَ بِخُمُورِهِنَّ عَلَىٰ جُيُوبِهِنْ That they take this khimar that was just on their head, instead of it flowing through the back, it should flow through the front to cover the bosom and the chest area, the neck and the ears. And for those who have the audacity to say that there is no verse in the Qur'an that talks about the hijab, I have no idea where they came up with this audacity. Is it because of the ignorance of the Muslims or their own ignorance? That we hear Muslim people, women and men arguing about the validity of the hijab. And for all of you who have question marks, all you have to do is go on Sheikh Google, the Kafir one, and put in there the Muslims in whatever country you come from in the 50s and 60s and see what the women used to dress like and what they looked like. Up until 50 years ago, there was no debate. There was no misunderstanding about the hijab and how the hijab is worn and what it looks like. There was no debate whatsoever from men or from women. It was not a debate. But the audacious people who don't fear Allah from amongst the Muslims, and the audacious kuffar, that this is what they are supposed to do, is fight purity in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, say things that we regurgitate without any haya, without any fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this verse is just one of many verses that we are going to discuss insha'Allah ta'ala. Aisha radiallahu anha, he said, she said, رحم الله نساء المهاجرات The women who made hijrah, the early Muslim women, as soon as the ayah of the hijab came down, that they tore from the cloths that they had everywhere and they covered themselves. In a hurry, when the men brought them the information from the masjid. Subhanallah, ikhwani. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala قول وَسَارِعُوا إِلَىٰ مَغْفِرَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضِ And steadfast towards the Jannah وَسَارِعُوا إِلَىٰ مَغْفِرَةٍ And steadfast towards, steadfast towards the forgiveness of Allah And a Jannah that is as wide as the heavens and the earth أُعِدَّتْ لِمِين أُعِدَّتْ للمتقين. It's been prepared for those who fear, love, adorn and obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَلْيَضْرِبْنَ بِخُمُورِهِنَّ عَلَىٰ جُيُوبِهِنْ وَلَا يُبْدِينَ زِينَتَهُنَّ إِلَّا لِبُعُولَتِهِنْ And they are not to show their beauty and their adornments. And now he's talking about the inside beauty only to their, who? Their husbands. And why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala start with the husbands first? And then the brothers, he said. Subhanallah. Because the husband has the right to see the most out of the woman. More than her brother, more than her father, more than anyone. Even her women that she belongs to. And then at the end of this ayah, it's a lengthy one, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the categories. You can go back to Surah An-Nur, the 31st verse, and, re and look at these um, at your own leisure. 
ولا يضربن بأرجلهن ليعلم ما يخفين من زينتهن وتوبوا إلى الله جميعا أيها المؤمنون لعلكم تفلحون and then at the end of the same verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he tells the believing woman to not walk in a heavy and fierce manner that men or other people might hear might know what you are hiding at your ankles or at your feet the woman used to wear it's like those ankle bracelets that our sisters wear today and they used to have a lot of little trinkets on them it's today compare it to the high heels when the woman is walking tuck, 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 tuck. they make a sound that sound is forbidden, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. I have not mentioned any ahadith yet. And another thing that we can pull out of this is that women are not to walk like men. Walk fast and push down on their feet and have this kind of vigor. They're supposed to walk with haya. وَجَاءَتْ إِحْدَاهُمَا تَمْشِي عَلَى istihya. When the women came to Musa alayhi salam, the two sisters, what did they came? They came walking in a modest way. She didn't come up to him like a man and said, Salam alaikum. How are you? Nice to meet you. And it was said when Musa alayhi salam, he walked in front of them. He did not walk next to them or behind them. And he said, every time we are going to turn, you throw a rock so I know which direction to turn right or left. Allahu Akbar. In Ikhwani, the Jannah that Allah is talking about for the Sahaba, for the believers that came before us, for the Anbiya that came from before us, are the one we are seeking. So if they are going to enter it, and they are fearless, or they are in fear that Allah may not accept their deeds, and they had so many good deeds, in very little, not so good deeds, if any. We are the opposite. And Abu Bakr, wa ma adrakum, Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, he said, if I had one foot in paradise and one foot out, I still would worry that Allah may not accept me and put me in hellfire. And today, we have people that don't pray, that don't wear hijab that go out there on social media plastering their faces and doing makeup tutorials. We have husbands sitting next to their wives on social media and he's questioning her, Ayn al -ghayra? Where is the jealousy of a man who does this, a male, I apologize. Where is the jealousy? When the Prophet Sallallahu he said, لا يدخل الجنة ديوث. The man who has no غيرة, no jealousy over his family manners, his, his family and his um, family members shall not enter Jannah والعياذ بالله. Where is this غيرة? In والله إخواني بغير حياء. We lift up our arms. الفردوس الأعلى. الله أكبر علينا. الله أكبر علينا. Allahu Akbar Alina. قال ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما كانت النساء قبل هذه أي قبل آية الحجاب التي نزلت يدنين خمورهن من ورائهن. What I was explaining to you earlier that Ibn Abbas رضي الله عنه said that the women they used to put the khimar, throw it behind their back, and when Islam came, they pulled it to the front and covered themselves with it. قالت عائشة رضي الله عنها رحم النساء المهاجرات الأول لما نزلت هذه الصورة and I told you this one already وليضربن بخمورهن على جوبهن شققن مروطهن فاختمرن بها they took any of the cloths or any fabric that they have fabric is the good word I'm looking for they teared it up and made خمار out of it immediately they didn't say, I'm going to make tawbah, insha'Allah, I'm going to order the hijab from overseas, it will be here in six months, and it might get stuck. Insha'Allah, Ya Rabbi, get stuck. Ikhwani, Ikhwani. 
Wallahi, if they told you to, you're going to get a promotion, you're going to move across the state or across the country, and you're going to make 10 times more, nobody would hesitate. If it was you, your wife, anybody, you would not hesitate. But when it comes to the deen of Allah, we are so slow to respond, all of us, including myself. But the most important thing that we have to do is realize how far back we are. Realize how bad it is. Because if you don't know you have a cancer, you can't start the proper treatment. Then after ayat al-khimar, this is just a khimar that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now gradually tells the believing woman. At first, he told them to change the direction of the khimar. They always, they used to wear, cover their hairs. They used to wear fadfad, wasa. They used to wear that, the woman in jahiliyyah. They just had this portion open, the neck in the beginning of their chests was not covered in their ears. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He makes it more specific في الأحزاب and He says, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّبِيُّ قُلْ لِأَزْوَاجِكَ وَبَنَاتِكَ وَنِسَاءِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ يُدْنِينَ عَلَيْهِنَّ مِنْ جَلَابِيبِهِنَّ ذَٰلِكَ أَدْنَىٰ أَنْ يُعْرَفْنَا أَنْ يُعْرَفْنَا فَلَا يُؤْذَيْنَ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا Then the ayah in the Ahzab came. Second command. O oh, Prophet of Allah, يَا نَبِي الله يَا أَيُّهَا النَّبِي قُلْ لِأَزْوَاجِكَ Tell to your wives. So the Prophet ﷺ started with the wives. قُلْ لِأَزْوَاجِكَ Then he said what? وَبَنَاتَكَ Then your daughters. And then وَنِسَاءِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Then the women of the believers. That they are to cover themselves with their jalabib. What is, what is the jilbab? The jilbab is something that is worn from the head all the way down. Like you hear some people who don't fear Allah, they call it a tent. She looks like a walking tent. When she has a full jilbab on. And the ulama said that the jilbab, it starts from the head and goes all the way down to the toe, meaning it has to cover the face. And there's a difference of opinion that I'm going to tell you about, insha'Allah ta'ala. مِنْ جَلَابِيبِهِنْ ذَٰلِكَ أَدْنَىٰ أَيُّ عَرَفٍ جَاهُنَا الْجَوَابِ there's proof in this same ayah why the women should cover their faces so they are not known. So nobody knows who they are. That they will not be transgressed upon. They would not be harmed. And today we want to kill all of these assumptions that people assume about al-hijab and the proper hijab that I need my daughters and my wife and my family members to hear in its totality. And we ask Allah to forgive us that this was not addressed many years ago. So the Prophet ﷺ, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said that they are to cover themselves so they are not known, so they are not harmed, they are not transgressed upon. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا And Allah is all forgiven, all merciful. For what? For the past. When they were not covered. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ فِي الْمَاضِي وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا سُبْحَانَ Another proof for this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says to the believers, the believing men, when He says, وَإِذَا سَأَلْتُمُهُنَّ مَتَاعًا فَاسْأَلُهُنَّ مِنْ وَرَاءِ حِجَابٍ Allah says to the men that are going to ask the women and the wives of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم وَهُنَّ أُمَّهَاتُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ They are the mothers of the believers that no one can marry and everybody has to treat them and love them like their mother. And even with this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, فَاسْأَلُهُنَّ مِنْ وَرَاءِ حِجَابِ ذَٰلِكُمْ أَطْهَرُ لِقُلُوبِكُمْ وَقُلُوبِهِنْ 
This is pure for your hearts and theirs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not negate, does not take away, does not permit the humanity that it is instilled in us. That the shaitan that flows in our veins, that the evil soul and what we have in our soul, he does not negate it subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why deen islam is a preventative deen. These things we talk about, these things that Islam talks about is to prevent not falling into haram. It's to prevent not being regretful when these calamities might happen from them mingling, from not worrying about mixing and talking and giggling and laughing. Wallahi, we need six khutbas for this. أَقُولُ مَا تَسْمَعُونَ أَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوا اللَّهِ بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا. So Allah سبحانه وتعالى in another verse he says وقرن في بيوتكن ولا تبرجن تبرج الجاهلية الأولى. In Allah سبحانه وتعالى he says and stay in your homes. He's talking to the sisters وقرن هنا يخاطب المؤمنات. Allah is talking to the believers. If you don't like it, it's okay. Allah is talking to the believers. And remain in your homes. And to remain with stability, with qarar, bil istiqrar. Madid qaf ra, wa qaf ra. Min waqara. Or to stay. To stay with tranquility not to stay because you are forced and the man transgress upon you and somebody says if you leave the house we will beat you and all this nonsense that it might be going on other places of course here alhamdulillah 911 you'll be the one that will stay in a house not your house and you will stay and you won't go anywhere and that's why Allah, He told the Prophet ﷺ to tell us, and then Allah addresses the believing women alone. So that they are aware of the situation. And that if they don't obey the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will have a torment. And Huna قال وَلَا تَبَرَّجْنَ تَبَرُّجَ الْجَاهِلِيَ الْأُولَى مِنَ الْعُلَمَاءِ مِنْ قَالْ التَّبَرُّجْ هُوَ الْخُرُوجْ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ some of the scholars said that if the woman leaves the house, this is a form of tabarruj, of not being dressed, of being exposed. As the Prophet ﷺ, he said, إِذَا خَرَجَتِ الْمَرْأَةُ مِنْ بَيْتِهَا إِسْتَشْرَفَهَا الشَّيْطَانِ That as soon as the woman leaves the house, the shaitan, he grabs her. What's his ideology? What's his thought process? أَمَّا أَنْ يُفْتِنَهَا أَوْ أَنْ يُفْتِنَ بِهَا The shaitan takes the woman and when she's exposed and going out. Sit up, young man. That the shaitan will tell the women, the woman to do certain things to make her lose her deen and her haya or her haya and her deen and to help others lose their deen and lose their haya wal ayadu billah. And I understand this is such a far-fetched ideology. This is probably unheard of and many of you have never heard this information before. But it's right there in the Quran. These ahadith are authentic. I will not bring you anything that is not authentic and that was our agreement from the beginning. But today, when you say these things, you're a foreigner. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Tuba lil ghuraba. Tuba is a tree in Jannah for those who are strangers. This is strange information to many. And that's why al jazaa min jins al-amal. And I will conclude with this. 
to solidify covering of the face that it's the best position and it's pure. And for those who say, oh, النقاب لا أصل له في الإسلام. That's why the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام he said لا تنتقب المحرمة ولا تلبس القفاز. He used the word النقاب. The Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام. النبي. He used the word that she should not cover her face with a niqab and she should not put on gloves. And from this the ulama said that it's permissible for the woman to show her face in her hands. But I'm going to tell you the reason I said the position of niqab is stronger. Aisha radiallahu anha, he said, we were with the Prophet sallallahu doing tawaf and every time a group of men passed by us we would take our jilbab, our big covering, wide, non-exposing clothes, and we would cover our faces at such. Ikhwani, when they talk about a niqab, is to wear the niqab just like the men don't wear pants. But we still have to cover with something other than the pants. So the women, they used to cover their faces like this. For those of you from North Africa, they cover just like so, and only one eye is shown. And when the men left, they would expose their face again. So not wearing a niqab all the time and covering your face as men come are two different situations. Just like we wear al-ihram, and we cannot wear al-makhit, we cannot wear that which has been sewn, the women are not to wear a full face veil in Hajj. And this is foreign as well, mashallah. And I'm going to conclude, inshallah ta'ala, Billahi alaykum akhwani. Away from the debate of niqab and covering and not covering the face, this is to be out of fairness to the subject. That, of course, there are certain places, maybe situations that the niqab may not be the best option. That's a case-by-case -case and debatable thing. But to wear and dress properly as a Muslimah, this is something we cannot escape anywhere. Akhi, we did not, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not send all of us to this country for us to lose our deen, our haya, our modesty, and to lose our wives and daughters. This is a trial and a turbulation. Yes, it is. But 90% of the time, dear brothers and sisters, the woman goes out and works because we want to have a better car, a better house, a better lifestyle, a bigger house, a nice signature on your left lapel because the $5 wallet, Walmart one or whatever doesn't work. It has to be Lacoste, Mapost, whatever. This is the main reason, Akhwani. Because after all the studies, if a woman has one or two children, and we're, for those who are not married, it's a different situation. It's a case by case. But understand, all of the problems that we, in today, we are in today, and the hijab that we see that is so weird, Akhwani, that the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, and I will conclude with this hadith, Two types of the dwellers of hellfire have not seen yet. The first one is talking about the unjust ruler. We will put that aside. The second one is, قَالَ نِسَاءٌ Listen to this hadith. Listen carefully. نِسَاءٌ كَاسِيَاتٌ عَارِيَات مَائِلَات مُمِيلَات this is one of the most dangerous hadith explicit that we see in our day and time. What did he say? Nisa'un kasiat ariyat. Women that are dressed but they are naked. Oh, body stretches everything that you see. Everything that you see. Muhajabat wa ghair muhajabat. Of course, she has a long shirt on that comes down to the middle of her hips. Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. 
Sometimes they need to put grease on to pull these pants on. Billah. Grease. Or Vaseline, of course, because Vaseline is cleaner than grease. And then all the mafatan, everything is shown. And of course, Allahu Akbar hijab. Red, blue, green, whatever. In what? In high heels. Ma'ilat, they walk and they're swaying. Mumilat, they sway others with them. Either by they look at them swaying or they sway their hearts back and forth. Ma'ilat, Mumilat, they walking in the street, walking, ha ha ha, laughing. Wallahi, can the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam aish ma'ana. Alayhi salatu wa salam. Uqsim bi Rabbil Ka'ba. Ma'ilat, Mumilat. They are swaying and swaying everybody with them. Ru'usuhunna, their heads are like the humps of camels. And why did they say this? Or what did he say this, Prophet ﷺ? Before, the women used to wear, they put things in their hair to make, to think. So men or other people think that they have thick hair. They have a lot of hair. That's why they used to do that. And today they do it for whatever other reasons. Wallahu ta'ala a'la. But the description is identical. Ma'ilatun mumilat. Ru'usuhunna ka asnimat al Their heads are like the humps of camels. La yashmamna ra'ihat al jannah. They will not even smell the smell of jannah, in that the smell of jannah is of the distance, is of a huge and long and far, far away distance, can be smelled. Wal'ayadu billah. And today, if you talk to anybody, they say, you cannot judge me. We've discussed the whole do not judge me thing. Ikhwani, I know, and I've said this many times from the minbar, if we stayed back home where we came from, playing with the camels and the goats, and we did not learn philosophy, and we did not learn math and science and everything else that we've done nothing with, by the way, for the ummah, just to be fair. We have plenty of doctors, plenty of engineers, plenty of everything, plenty of Hufat Qur'an, Layl Sabu Ashreen, millions making dua, nothing has changed. Why? Because our hearts are not pure. Our hearts are not in the wrong place. Every single one of us here, إِلَّا مَنْ رَحِمَ اللَّهِ رَحْمَةً وَاسِعًا I will conclude, they believe with a but. Every single one of you, every single one of us, we believe with a but. And that but is what we need to purify out of our hearts, each one of us on a soul basis, before we go and we die. Men and women, all of us, no exception, starting from the du'at and the ulama and all the way down to those who know nothing about Islam. We have something in our hearts. إِلَّا مَنْ رَحِمَ اللَّهِ Only those whom Allah has protected and safeguarded. وَقَلِيلٌ مَهُمْ And there are very few and far in between. Allah says, وَقَلِيلٌ مِنْ عِبَادِ يَشْكُورٌ And very few of my servants are thankful. This is very simple. وَإِن تُطَعْ أَكْثَرَ مَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ يُضُلُّوك عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ If you follow the majority of people on earth, they will lead you astray from the path of Allah. When a woman comes out and she knows she's not a Muslim or she looks like a kafira and talks about the hijab, do you think Jibreel wal Malaika are backing her or as shaitan wa a'wan? How do you think she's gonna say something pure when she is led by the shaitan if she is not a shaitan? When's the last time you heard a munaqaba, muhtashima, mutagattiyah and she said something about the hijab? She's the one who should say it. She's the one who has the right to say it. She's the example that should be led. اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم ربنا لا تؤاخذنا بما فعلنا في أنفسنا من ظلم وسفه وعدوان اللهم اغفر لنا تقصيرنا في إخواننا في كل مكان اللهم اغفر لنا تقصيرنا في إخواننا في كل مكان اللهم اغفر لنا تقصيرنا في إخواننا في كل مكان اللهم انعمت علينا فزد اللهم زد بنعمك علينا فضلا ونعمة ودينا وخلقا يا رب العالمين ونعوذ 
ذنوبك من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا اللهم اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان قوموا إلى صلاتكم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Allah, 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 Allah,